No. Okay. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second seminar of January of our statistical physics joint ICTP CISA meeting. And it's my pleasure today to introduce to you Ginestra Bianconi from uh, Queen's Mary University of London and Aral Turin Institute also in London. So Ginestra is an expert in several aspects of statistical mechanics. In particular, she has pioneered ideas in network theory that span several fields. And she has also had a stint here before uh, setting in London for several years. So it's also a double pleasure for us to introduce her here. And today she will be telling about her recent research on the Dirac operator and dynamics of topological signals. Please, Ginestra. Thank you so much for the kind, oh, sorry, maybe you should have, um... This on okay so thank you so much for the kind invitation It's a real pleasure to be back in trieste and meet so many friends um today i want to tell you about work that we have been doing during covid so you will see we we took a, a, a route that is quite original probably due to the isolation <laughs> that we, we 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 experience and in particular i want to tell you about research work on topological signals and the dirac cooperator so um this work sparks from the interest on higher order networks and higher order networks are characterizing interaction between two or more nodes in uh, complex systems, typically. And they come in different flavors. So they can be hypergraph, in which you have interaction that are uh, not only pairwise, but include many body um, higher order interaction. You have simplicial complex that are a special type of hypergraph that are amenable to topological treatment, and then network with triadic interaction, which are very interesting, and uh, research is, has, been, is, has been done here in uh, ICTP regarding those, and, but I will not speak about those uh, today. So um, for instance, uh, higher order interaction are attracting a lot of interesting brain research when you can have three regions of the brain that are correlated pairwise, or activated at the same time, and this leads to a higher order interaction, which is uh, depicted not just a triangle formed by three nodes and three links, but a field triangle in which you have this higher order interaction. Another very intuitive example of higher order network is, for instance, collaboration network, where you have team that collaborate at papers, so each paper is co-authored by more than two authors typically. And uh, so this has sparked the interest on in higher order network. And of course, one of the central team in network science has been the interplay between structure and dynamics. And uh, there has been in network science a lot of research in this direction, in particular focusing on the combinatorial and statistical property of networks. For instance, how the scale-free distribution change the critical behavior of uh, critical, critical phenomena, such as the easy model, percolation, and so on. Uh, but when you look at higher order networks, not only combinatorial and statistical property are important, but also network topology and network uh, geometry. And this is the central theme of, of my talk today. And this is kind of the message of a little book that I uh, published by Cambridge University Press. And this is a very personal account of higher order networks. But actually, if you want to see some uh, wider, uh, wider point of view from a more um, comprehensive set of people, you can look at our nature physics perspective article on uh, higher order network, in which we highlight the, imports, the importance of topological signals. So dynamical variable, not only associated to the node of the network as it's usual, but also associated to the links, to the triangles, to the tetrahedra, and this dynamical variable here depicted as a clock on the links 
can be projected up and down on triangle or on node using topological uh, tools. And I will speak about that. So what are simplices? So here we will look at higher order network in the term of simplicial complex. Simplices are a set of D plus one node. It's D-dimensional simplices are set of D plus one nodes. So, and they encode this higher order interaction. So a zero simplex is one node, a one simplex is a link, a two simplex is a triangle and so on. And they encode this higher order interaction, which I mentioned before, but also they can they are amenable to, to be treated with topology and geometry. And a phase of a simplicial complex is a simplex which is built by a subset of the node. So if you have a tetrahedra, the phases uh, or a three simplex, the phases are four nodes six links and four triangle. And these are important because a simplicial complex is a set of simplices, but close under the inclusion of the phases of its simplex. So if you have a triangle, then you should also include all the links and all the nodes of this triangle in your, in your set, in your simplicial complex. And this is a little, um, a little condition in order to apply all the beautiful tool of topology to this object. So here I want to mention that, so although now this talk is mostly about dynamics, structure and dynamics, we have also worked a lot on structure and on modeling. And um, because uh, simplicial complex, since they describe this network geometry, they uh, they are a um, very interesting uh, object to characterize network topology and geometry from data for instance you know you know fiber in the brain are play, are, are are forming manifold or you can have fungi and things like that so one question is whether the network geometry of complex system is a, a priori prerequisite of the network evolution so where nodes know that they are embedded into space or where there is uh, the, the spatial aspect of this network is an emergent phenomenon of network dynamics. And this leads to the concept of emergent geometry. So a mathematical tool which allows to describe a network that are geometrical but starting only for purely combinatorial and statistical property of, of, the, of the model. So we have worked on this approach that of course uh, is, is, is a wide history. Um, and, and here we have looked at a very simple model, for instance, a model in which you stack a triangle to a link randomly with this um, one, um, one two partner move at each time you do that deterministic uh, deterministically choosing this link uh, randomly and with probability p you do this other move that is closing this pi which is also close to one partner move in a way that each link is in is incident to at most two triangle you have this condition and the network that result is this kind of uh, very interesting manifold that uh, is uh, generated because the constraint that each link is incident at most to two triangle is the uh, in addition to the connectivity of the of of, of this uh, of this simplicial complex is a condition to build manifold is a combinatorial condition to build manifold so we can add this emergent geometry here and then we, this is two dimensional. So we went with model with higher, higher dimensional. Uh, so not only stuck in triangle to links, but also having tetrahedra and stuck in tetrahedra to triangles. And we, we do all, all, only this move of stacking a triangle to a link and we can generate a kind of tessellation of a hyperbolic uh, plane. So this emergent hyperbolic play, uh, the geometry is emergent in this way, or you can have three, 
3D uh, manifold. And when you add feature to, to the faces or to the nodes, then you can have transition also of, of the dynamics from something that grows in every direction, more or less uniformly, to something that chooses one direction is also called a kind of spine uh, direction. Or you can have also very crumpled configuration. So, yeah, so uh, for this model, we have a um, theoretical understanding of the homogeneous space, the, the, like this, this, uh, this, this phase transition, this spine uh, thing is, uh, is, is related to my previous work on Bose-Einstein condensation on complex networks. So it's a similar um, transition, but is um, also, well, also in network from the mathematical perspective, the, the transition to the Bose-Einstein condensation is not fully understood. So this is still still research ongoing, but. Uh, okay, so for instance, you look at the diameter, the, how the diameter scale with the network size. In one case is small word, so it scales like the logarithm of the network size here, like a beta lattice. And in this case is polynomial. This is, is finite dimensional, but you know, in one direction. So another approach to modeling is, um, is, is maximum entropy. And so a configuration model. And so we have also this kind of approach for simplicial complexes. Okay, so let me just now go back so this model you can take it as model of reference where we can run dynamical process if we want and let's now look back at this diagram how these different aspects shape the interaction between structure and dynamics and let me focus on the in the role of topology in shaping higher order um, dynamics and so topology is, of course, the study of shapes and their invariant. So the connected component of a network or the cavity, for instance, the one dimensional cavity of a circle or the two dimensional cavity of a sphere. And these are accounted, for instance, from Betty numbers. And when you look at the network, for instance, this fungi network is clear that the cycle structure is important there. And so you might want to use topology to do that. And there are ways to do that. For instance, persistent homology. You can, you can study the significance of this uh, cyclic pattern in the structure. But actually, what I want to tell you here is something different. How to use topology to study dynamics, topological signals. So topological signals are dynamical variables sitting not only on the nodes, but also on the links or eventually on triangle or the simplex you, you like. Also in cell complex, you can have a square or a cube. And so these topological signals are attracting increasing attention in the context of a complex systems. There are data about it. So for instance, you can think of a citation that a team of author got, no? not the team of three author or pair of two author got on their paper published together. Or you can have fluxes in biological transportation networks that are defined on the links, synaptic signals between the nodes. There is all of spores that is, is, uh, is pushing on edge signals at the level of brain region. And you can have also vector fields. So vector defined on, on, on the node, for instance, of a simplicial complex, but then as, for instance, speed of wind at given location or current at given location in the ocean, and you have a tessellation of the surface of the earth. So you project this vector on the tessellation. So you define 
you, you treat this vector field essentially as a co-chain, so as a function defined on the links of, of, of the triangulation. So in order to treat topological signals, we need algebraic topology. So uh, a simplex, as I said, is a set of, D simplex is a set of D plus one nodes. So simplices have an orientation. So uh, because in, in algebraic topology, because they are considered as the element of a vector space. So uh, for instance, you have a, a link IJ and this has a different orientation of the link JI opposite orientation of the link tree. This is, here is indicated with arrow, but it's not a direction, it's only an orientation. And uh, a triangle, you can have a uh, anti-clockwise direction, one, two, three, and then, uh, you know, you have the opposite orientation that is um, with, uh, in, 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 in the uh, clockwise direction. So with uh, simplices, with oriented simplices, you can construct uh, M chain. So linear combination of these oriented simplices with coefficient either in the integer or in the real. And from this uh, chain, you can have a kind of interpretation of what is an M chain. So for instance, you have one, three minus two, three plus two, four. You go from one to three, from three to two, because there is a minus in front, and then from two to four. So you can construct, you can have uh, algebraic expression for, for instance, also um, uh, cycle or things like that. So on this end chain, you can define a boundary operator. And this is an important operator that maps each uh, n, n chain to n minus one chain. And so it can be defined by this action on each simplex of the simplicial complex. And if you apply it to a link, uh, the boundary operator gives the two endpoints with opposite, with two minus one. If you apply the boundary operator to a triangle, one, two, three, you get the three link at its boundary. And for this is the name. So you get one, two, two, three, and minus one, three. So you go from three to one along, along the orientation of the triangle. And there is nothing to be very scared about because these boundary matrices are only are represented by matrices, rectangular matrices that have nodal links. So here, the boundary of the link one, two is one, uh, is two minus one and the boundary of the triangle is uh, one, two, uh, two, three, minus one, three. So you, you construct these rectangular matrices. And then this uh, boundary operator actually have a, also a geometrical interpretation. So uh, B1 can be interpreted, interpreted as a discrete divergence, B1 transpose as the discrete gradient, B2 transpose as the discrete curl. And uh, you have this property that is a very important topological property that the boundary of the boundary is null. So because if you have a triangle, the boundary is the links at the boundary of the triangle, but this is a closed cycle. So uh, the boundary of the boundary is null. So you can go practically only one dimension up or one dimension down with, with the boundary operator. So by concatenating the boundary operator, you can construct Hodge Laplacian, which describe diffusion from n simplices to n simplices, either going one dimension down, n minus one, or one dimension up. So the, for, for the node, you can only go one dimension up, and this is the graph Laplacian. For the links, you can go down and up. And if you are, if we have only node links and triangles for, 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 for the, um, for the triangle, you can only go down to the link. And so this Hodge Laplacian can, can be written in this way. So you go either uh, one dimension up or one dimension down. So you can go from, no, from link to link through node or from link to link through triangle. And so 
and importantly, this Hodge Laplacian encode topology because the dimension of the kernel is the n Betty number. And actually, also the eigenvector of the kernel can be. Uh, there is a basis of the kernel, uh, the eigenvector uh, of, of the kernel in which the eigenvector are localized on the cavity, on the n-dimensional cavity. And this ln down and ln up, they have very interesting property because the image of one is in the kernel of the other. And this leads to a very nice property that is called Hodge decomposition, which tells you that if you have a sinus on the links, that is a unique way to write it as a gradient flow going away from a source or into a sink, an harmonic component along the cavity and a curve flow um, uh, or solidonial component. Okay, so this is a very nice tool that is uh, taking a lot of interest uh, in, in higher order networks to treat topological signals. And what we did is we use it to uh, define a Kuramoto model on, for topological signals. So the Kuramoto model is this model proposed by Kuramoto in 75. So you have um, faces associated to the node of the network the phases oscillate at their own frequency, and then they are coupled in, in such a way that each node can try to align to the phase of the nearby node. And in a fully connected network in the infinite limit, you have a phase transition between an unsynchronized phase to a synchronized phase with this order parameter. And so Despite each phase as its own intrinsic frequency that is drawn randomly from a Gaussian distribution, for instance, so they, there is no coherence if there is no interaction, then if the strain, the coupling constant is larger than a bit, there is this finite fraction of oscillator that start to oscillate together. So the question is, can we define this Kuramoto model for phases associated to the links, okay? So, um, so what we did is, is quite simple. So we started by uh, an expression of the above, the above equation for the Kuramoto model in terms of the boundary operator. This is exactly equal to the equation that Kuramoto wrote. And so in terms of the boundary operator, you see that the coupling couple uh, phase of the node, if they share a link in this nonlinear type of coupling. And so what we did is we, def so this is a vector of the phases of the node. This is the vector of the frequencies, internal frequency of the links, and this is the coupling term. So what we did is we consider a phase associated to the links now, intrinsic frequency associated to the links, and then the coupling such that link to link try to align to each other if they share a triangle or if they share uh, a node. And the linearized dynamics is... Can there be that there are sides which are not coupled by to anybody? I'm uh, well, if they are isolate, isolated. Uh, it links does not belong to any, to any triangle, like just from the sides. Yeah, but it is, it, there is the other term. So they can be, con uh, links can be, Let's are coupled it. if they are connected by triangle or they are connected by a link. And if they are connected by a link. So the linearized dynamics is the one defined by the Hodge Laplacian. And from this is apparent that the harmonic moment, so when the phi is aligned into the kernel of the Laplacian, the harmonic model are the ones that are free to oscillate and the other modes are dumped. So the synchronization that remains if the other mode frees is actually only a synchronization along the cavity. So the dynamics select the cavity and oscillate only along the cavities. And so in order to, to me measure what happens to the other mode, we 
we filter, so we project the phase on the links to the triangles or to the nodes, and this space, um, and, and from this projected dynamics that is now totally decoupled, we can see that essentially this other mode that are not harmonic uh, freeze uh, with the, with, uh, when we raise the coupling constant sigma. And we have two other parameters, one for the phases projected on the node, for instance, and one for the phases projected on the links. And what we can do then is what we can kind of modulate the coupling constant of one term coupling links that share triangles with the order parameter of the projected dynamics on the node and vice versa. And the two projected dynamics are not anymore the couple and we get an explosive transition discontinuous. This is a configuration model of simplicial complexes, uh, which I mentioned before. It's a kind of random graph, uh, but we did it also on NGF, and we did it also, uh, as you see, on real data set. So we can have real connectome. We build a simplicial complex from in, in a way that is called a clique complex, and we find this phenomena. So it seems to be quite independent on, on the topology. Although, I mean, we, we want to, to go back to this so again and check it carefully. But, um, so in particular, I think uh, the cavity distribution uh, would maybe... Uh, uh, in, on a random graph, yes. So this is on a fully connected network. On a random graph, yes, you have a transition. Um, the analytic tool to characterize this transition are not exact, but there are approximations. So there are the annealed approximation, which is called, that we also use to, to you for our model, uh, gives uh, good result on random graph, for instance. doesn't need to be fully connected, yeah, yeah. Although with the network with the spectral dimension, uh, you might have some, some instability of, of the fully synchronized state. Uh, so there is a critical spectral dimension that should be. Uh, you can have some kind of frustrated localized synchronization. So the question is, can we now have a dynamics that couple node and links? And so for this, we, did, we need the Dirac operator. We need to leave the Hodge Laplacian and um, treat the, the Dirac operator. So here, I, I just wanted to put this slide to be uh, sure. So the Dirac operator is not something uh, we invented or I invented. I saw it. Uh, first in a paper by Satelloid, uh, uh, Garneron and Zanardi in 2016, which is a very nice paper proposing quantum algorithm for topological data analysis. Unfortunately, they don't cite anybody for the data cooperator. So I, I worked in my group for a long time without having other reference for that. But recently I found a very interesting reference um, by Olaf Post in 2009, which is uh, a mathematician, uh, which uh, characterized a lot of property of the Dirac cooperator. And also he doesn't cite anybody. And, and But I, I could go back and see that um, Davis as uh, in non-commutative geometry, as a paper in which he mentioned uh, the Dirac on graph. And this is as far as I could <laughs> go back. Of course, there are also other papers that cite this paper, but, yeah, and, and we are working quite intensively on that and starting from my 2021 paper. And uh, I, will, I will speak about this work. So the Dirac operator, acts on a topological spinner. So you have, for instance, if you have node links and triangles, 
you have a node signal, a link signal, and a triangle signal. And the DDAC operator is defined in terms of the boundary. And so this is a block structure between node, links, and triangle. So you, this is a, uh, in, when you have a simple shell complex of two dimension, but you can go higher. And so when you applied the DRAC operator on the topological spinners, these allow the links to be projected on the nodes, uh, the nodes to be projected on the links and so on. So you can uh, allow cross-talking about these signals in different dimension using the DRAC operator. And why is it called the DRAC operator? Because it's most characteristic property as Dirac in his paper was looking for uh, is uh, that uh, the square of the Dirac operator is the Laplacian. So is a matrix was diagonal part are the Hodge Laplacian. And um, okay, so of course the eigenvalue of the Dirac operator will be the square of the eigenvalue of, 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 of the Laplacian. The, the Laplacian, so you have positive and negative eigenvalues, not any more positive definite. On a triangle, you can decompose in D1 and D2, D1 only couple northern links, D2 only couple links and triangle. And for this direct decomposition that we call, you, you can play the same game of Hodge decomposition. So you can have that, that any, scene, any topological spinners on node links and triangles can be decomposed in a unique way into node and links, links and triangles, or an harmonic component. And so the Dirac operator as uh, the spectrum that are this uh, square plus or minus the square root of the Laplacian, and then plus a zero again value, which has the generacy, the sum of the Betty number. And the eigenvector are the eigenvector either of D1 or D2 or harmonic, and the eigenvector of D1 are related by chirality. So uh, the eigenvector of D1 are, are of this type, either U1, V1, or U1 minus V1 where U1 and V1 are the matrices that indicate the left and the right singular value of the boundary operator. So let's start to consider on a network. On a network, uh, this definition of the Dirac operator is, can be written as D plus D star, where D is the stereo derivative and D star is its dual. So this is a self-adjoint operator. And so this is the most basic way to define the Dirac on a network. Uh, for, for the moment, not. Okay. But. Um, okay. So let, let me, let me go. I, I, I think. I think Dirac is correct in this case. So um, you can put a complex number in front. And as long as this modulus is one, the square will be the Laplacian as well. So this complex number, as we will see, plays the role of a gamma matrix. And um, as if you work, for instance, in one dimension or two dimension, uh, this is enough. And if you want to have lattice, instead you need to uh, kind of upgrade to a gamma function. So you have a topological spinner that now is defined on node and links. So a vector defined on all the nodes and all the links. So this is a spinner, but as a geometrical interpretation. And you can start writing the equation in a Dirac equation in an Hamiltonian form. So with this, Dirac operator that I defined before this uh, D plus D star. And beta is this uh, kind of matrix, familiar matrix where D and beta anti-commute. And this of course is related to the chirality of, um, of the eigenvector of D. So just to show you that you, you can do this, you can study this, um, 
this uh, eigen, uh, eigen value problem. And when you do that, you see that key is uh, an eigen vector of the graph Laplacian with uh, and, and, and the and C is eigen vector of the L1 down Laplacian. And there is the dispersion relation is the relativistic one. So the energy state are of course positive and negative. And so you have this kind of matter antimatter symmetry, but the state at energy equal to M, they correspond to the harmonic eigenvector. So these are might not be symmetric. On a chain, you have uh, the, the harmonic eigenvector on the nodes and the links is the same because well, for duality, a chain and node and the links are the same. But in general, for a network, you can have, uh, you might have more state at value energy M or then uh, energy minus M or vice versa. So the eigenvector can be represented on any network. So, you know, for instance, node and links, you can plot it, play with this. And of course, it's also interesting, you can play with weights, weights of the node and weights of the need, because, well, um, of course, I, I mentioned to you the, the Laplacian, but there is also the weighted Laplacian or the normalized Laplacian. So you can introduce some weight and, and uh, have a Dirac operator in which now here you have the out dual of, of, of the, this is, this is the co-boundary and this is the Hodge dual of the co-boundary. So we applied this to many classical problems. So for instance, synchronization again, we find this uh, discontinuous transition, forward transition and uh, continuous uh, backward transition, but as a function of Z, of this Z so with this nonlinear coupling, we can have to this continuous transition. And here the node and the links are coupled locally. So the, the node feels only the nearby links and the link feel only the nearby nodes. So it's quite different from what I showed you before with this global uh, coupling constant uh, that, that was depending on the order parameter. Here is the dynamics is local and you have this phenomena. The linearized dynamics is this one. The harmonic component are the one that remain unchanged, while the other component here we treat the the, the component along uh, the eigenvector lambda and minus lambda together. Um, they they have a, they don't freeze uh, with a damping with a stable fixed point, but they have a stable focus. So there is a kind of uh, rhythm at merging, and also in the nonlinear model, uh, we find this emergence of low frequency rhythm that we are quite fascinated with. So this is rhythm that emerge from the dynamics. Um, for the moment, we don't have a theoretical understanding in addition to, to the fact that the linearized dynamics is a stable focus, but for the fully nonlinear model, um, this uh, emergence of low frequency rhythm is just a numerical um, observation for the moment. Yeah. Kind of synchronization also seen in the Laplacian of the same graph, uh, or is it more a property of the? the so, array? so if, if you put z equal to zero, these dynamics decouple and will be the dynamics of node, the standard Kuramoto, and the standard uh, link uh, link connected to node. And if you have this z, then you have this local coupling of northern links, so they will start speaking together. So, uh, yeah, in some sense, you can go back to, to. So we also consider Turing patterns. Um, not all topology uh, satisfy the condition to have Turing pattern on their structure, but square lattice do. So we can have stripes, we can have more complex pattern. Uh, 
And we are also applying to signal processing. So when you have signals on the nodes and on the links and you want to do signal processing jointly. But uh, now I want to tell you something more about three plus one dimensional lattice. So if you have a, we see that we have D plus D star, this is the Dirac operator on a graph, but we can play with this complex number. And so this complex number can be used to play and distinguish between um, link in the X direction or in the Y direction. So when I do the boundary on the X direction, I, I put B equal to one. And when I do the boundary on the Y direction, I put be equal to i so that I can distinguish between the two direction. But in three dimension, I need more. And also in four dimension, three plus one dimension, I need more. So this is what I, I try to do. So I want to distinguish between four different direction, x, y, z, and t. I, I want to have weight on the links eventually. And I now change a bit the scenario and I have uh, the function on the links is now not defined on each link. Mm, so in such a way that is non-localized, but each link is directed. So you have I to J and I have a function defined on the link I to J, which in some sense describe a flux going from I to J and a function defined on j to i, such that they define the opposite direction flux. So in this way, the, the phase function is now localized. So I don't have any more this problem that the theory is not localized. And since I want to distinguish between these different direction, I have a part on the node, a part on the directed link, but the part on the node will be double. I will have two function defined on the node, and two functions defined on the links. And uh, the matrix, the weighted matrices here are e to the a1 and e to the a0. Uh, typically in algebraic topology, these metrics are taken real and diagonal. Here I took the liberty to take it more general. Although there might be geometric constraint that that I'm not taking into account yet that, that needs to apply. So I have the boundary operator that is uh, for each link is one and minus one, one link at one end minus the link on the other end. But these act only on link in the X direction, in the Y direction, in the Z direction. And I um, make it weighted with these uh, weighted matrices. So G0 is a node-by-node node matrix, G1 is the link-by-link link matrix. So I can have the Laplacian, which is B1, B1 dagger now, uh, and on, in direction X, and the Laplacian in the old network is the sum of the Laplacian X, Y, Z, and eventually also LT. If the network is not weighted, this Laplacian commute, but if it's weighted in an arbitrary metric, this Laplacian might not commute, okay? And uh, instead of having the complex number, I have now the gamma matrices that take this form and they are expressed in terms of the Pauli matrices. And the, the Dirac operator, the stereo derivative and X2 are, are indicated in this way. So where I practically double because I have two uh, one cochain and two uh, zero cochain. So this is a matrix that is two by two in, in, in the, this block form. And so the Dirac operator now has the gamma, d mu plus d mu star. And we can contract. And the way we contract the indices is by assuming that uh, the matrix is uh, Euclidean. So we absorb the complex number into the, the, the signature of the metric into the definition of the gamma matrices. So we have that the square of the directional Dirac operator is the Laplacian for spatial, spatial one. Uh, but for the 
time time uh, like directional operator the square is the laplacian with the minus in front as we want um and the funny thing that i noticed uh, in 2001 is that this data operator do not anti-commute and do not commute either. So it's not like the derivative that commute. It's, it's, in, in many cases, it's like a derivative, but they don't commute. So because if you go from if you go from a node to a link in the x direction, and then you have an operator that go from a link in the y direction to a node, you find zero because you are on the x links on the x direction. But if you are from the link in the X, you go on the node and then you go back in the link on the Y, then you have a non-zero term. And so uh, you have this non-zero co anti-commutator and commutator. And one can interpret the commutator as a curvature. This is non-zero only in the link-link sector. So there is already, two other indices hidden here that are the indices of the link, one non-zero in the X direction here and one non-zero in the Y direction. So one might want to define a rich scalar by summing over these, uh, these matrices, the element in the link mu and the element in the link nu, eventually if one wants. Um, so here it becoming more and more speculating my argument, but I think um, uh, it's a kind of program direction. So you can have a anti-commutator that is also uh, non-negative. And for, from the spatial direction, I call it mm, magnetic, um, um, magnetic field. And so you can define the Dirac operator where the, 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 node, the, the node part follows practically the Klein Gordon equation. And depending on L, the Laplacian in time and in space commuting or anti commuting, you can have uh, different, different dispersion relation because this P square might not be the sum of Px plus Py plus Pz, because if they don't commute, is is the eigenvector of, of their sum. Uh, and when they all commute, you get the, the relativistic dispersion relation. Um, and then I want to mention here one calculation which is quite particular when you have the time and the space Laplacian with not which, um, which commute, but the space Laplacian do not commute between each other. And then we have key that follows the Klein Gordon equation. Psi follows the Schrodinger equation with the zero magnetic constant two. And the game, the magnetic uh, field is played by the, by the anti commutator of the data cooperator. This is why we call it magnetic field. And interesting enough, uh, key is non negligible, is of order e to e minus m. So we can write some action for the matrix R contract F nu nu uh, uh, twice or contracted four times along, for instance, a plaquette. And of course, one can play the game and try to propose some equation, which would be an equation of motion of both the matter field, so the topological spinner, and the weight, so this matrix A1, A0, because this action is only determined in terms of the weight. Finally, going back to complexity, uh, of course, there are not only three-dimensional uh, uh, lattices. Of course, uh, in general, in a graph, you would like to have a gamma matrix, the right algebra for any uh, generic graph, and this is a very challenging thing to do. Uh, from the applied side, one can have also multi-layer networks in which you can have uh, two nodes connected by two link, only one link or only the other link in the other layer. So you can consider these three different type of links and treat them with the directional Dirac operator. And in this case, uh, the, the Laplacian do not 
commute with each other typically. So I reached my conclusion. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, so here we have uh, covered a series of work on topological signals, which are, uh, I believe, I hope you believe, you, you see these are amazing uh, objects. Uh, so they are dynamical variable, not only associated to the node, but also to the links. And they can undergo synchronization. And this synchronization has a relation with topology and in particular with the homology of the simplicial complex. And when we want to treat topological signal of different dimension, we can couple with the Dirac operator. And this Dirac operator has a lot of interesting use. They can be used in classical dynamics in a very wide set of uh, scenario. Uh, but I think also exploring the fact that the Dirac operator might propose a field theory in which the spinner is as a geometrical interpretation is quite interesting. And um, of course, uh, possibly this kind of idea could be maybe also simulated in, in some scenario. So just uh, uh, constructed on, I don't know, quantum, quantum, uh, quantum material. Try to, to, to construct an artificial uh, field theory of this type. Okay, so uh, I need to thank all my collaborators. My group is rather small, I should admit, but these are people that have worked with me uh, over the year. So at each time, <laughs> the team has been very small. And uh, this is uh, the selected uh, recent reference. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Jennifer. I have a question. Let me start. Uh, when you define the possible actions that you get for this Dirac, I would have said, okay, one just take the trace over the plaquette, and the which is kind of a B square term, and the trace of F minus F minus locally on a single link, which is the E square term. Uh, why don't you keep the simple choice and instead also have this first R term? This I did not understand. Um, so, yeah, so the history is that I, I took uh, this, uh, this first two action first. Um, um, yes, so th these are along the plaquette. So this, this can, can be a curve, kind of curvature going along the plaquette. Uh, this is um, kind of electromagnetic like inspired expression. Yeah, just, uh, just the leg, because the other one I will understand. Um, uh, yeah, so it's very strange because this F, this commutator and anti-commutator are quite interesting. Um, so of course the anti-commutator as um, as the, the term in which the d mu, d mu, right? That is non zero. But then um, when you do f nu nu, f nu nu, um, we, should, we should go and do this calculation together, is, is a bit like the electromagnetic interaction also. It's like you have also the magnetic part because, um, because of this particular structure. So practically what changes only the sign in between. And when you multiply uh, this anti-commutator with itself, essentially, then you have, uh, you go from uh, Y link to a X links, and then you need to contract with X links with Y links. Um, and so you have only a sign of difference maybe between the two when you do the square of this one. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's very strange. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's like uh, um, they, they are 
strictly related <laughs> these two this, this two quantities. So writing in term of the anti-commutator is is not so different from writing in term of the commutator. Um. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, um, okay, I, let me repeat the question. The question is that if you have node synchronization, uh, you, you have this synchronization Kuramoto-like, and then for a random graph similar to Kuramoto-like, but then if the network have a geometry and a spectral dimension, then this synchronization might be unstable, and then you have this frustrated synchronization. And so we have worked on this, and we have seen also this um, upper uh, spectral dimension. And here for Dirac synchronization, essentially we did not check carefully uh, on simply shell complex with the spectral dimension. It might be that when you have the Dirac synchronization, it might be that it is important not only the graph spectral dimension, but also the simply shell complex spectral dimension. Uh, there might be an interplay because uh, one can have spectral dimension both of graph and higher order, uh, higher order dynamics. So there might be, a, we, we are exploring that, yeah. For thanking Jeanette, let me say that she will be around the two weeks. So in case you want to arrange a session, just let me know. So let's thank Jeanette again. Thank you.